Suzuki established themselves in the United States by 2007, selling just over 100,000 cars. They'd exit the market just five years later. The Reno and Forenza led the way with about 40,000 cars combined. They were introduced in 2004 and are essentially rebatched Daewoo Lissetis. This would be the final year of production for both cars, as the SX4 was set to directly replace the Reno. The Forenza wouldn't see a successor for several years though. The SX4 was a Jujaro designed compact car that was co-developed with Fiat. It tackled the load of two model lines and three body cells. It set itself apart from the competition by focusing on all-wheel drive and its off-road capability. The X07 was coming off a redesign the previous year. It moved about 23,000 units, more than double what it sold the previous year. General Motors was heavily involved in the development of this generation. It shares the Theta platform with the Chevrolet Equinox and Pontiac Torrent and was even assembled at the same factory. Below the X07 was the Grand Vitara. The name traces all the way back to 1988, and it received an extensive redesign in 2005. It moved about 20,000 units in 2007, which is actually down from the previous year. This is one of only two cars that were solely developed by Suzuki, the other being the Aero Compact car. It had been on sale since 2001 without any meaningful updates. It too would be phased out in favor of the SX4. The seeds for further expansion were already in place. As long as things would according to plan, they'd be able to build in these strong numbers. Sales dipped just a bit to around 80,000, mostly because of the discontinuation of several cars. The SX4 sold nearly 30,000 cars in its first full year on the market. The numbers pale in comparison to what the Reno and Aver put up the year before though. Sales of the XL7 also went down, but they were relatively consistent considering the economic climate at the time. Surprisingly, sales of the smaller Grand Vitara dropped off by nearly half. The numbers were disappointing, but with more products on the way, Suzuki was primed for a comeback the next year. Right? 39,689. That's how many cars Suzuki sold in the entirety of 2009. The economic downturn was the main reason for the decline, but each car had their own reasons for falling off. The SX4 led the lineup, but at 20,713 units, year-to-year -year sales were down by more than a third. Its decline could likely be attributed to a combination of its bottom-of-the-pack fuel efficiency and Suzuki's lack of name recognition in this particular segment. Most people that were buying cars during the recession went with established nameplates and weren't willing to take a chance on a relative unknown. The new Equator pickup truck was just in a Nissan Frontier by a different name. Everything was exactly the same, save for a new grille and headlights. It brought up the rear of the lineup, only moving 2,221 units. Unfortunately, this would be the most the Equator would sell in its lifespan. The Grand Vitara continued its downward spiral, dropping down to 7,557 cars. It shares the SX4's shortcomings and often dropped off because SUVs as a whole were losing traction on the market. There was no tragedy bigger than the XL7. It sold 4,357 units, a decrease of over 80%. Almost all sales came from overstock, as the plant only built four XL7s that year. They halted production in May, and all sales from this point forward were from overstock. Things looked grim for the brand but another car launched on December 1st. The car was actually shown off as the Gizashi 3 concept the year before at New York. It was the third in the series of cars that got less interesting with each iteration. This car was a mid-size sedan that was envisioned as Suzuki's flagship. This is a bit of a departure from the compact cars and small 4x4s they'd built their reputation on in the past. The Kizashi series of concept cars were characterized by strength and athleticism. This is evidenced by the toned surfacing, long wheelbase, and short overhangs. The body styles themselves wouldn't look out of place in a Suzuki showroom, but the upscale execution is definitely a change for them. Dimensionally, the production car was quite similar to the concept. They were exactly the same length, and the production car was a bit taller, narrower, and had a slightly smaller wheelbase. 
The design is somewhat close to the concept, with the biggest differences being the headlights and taillights. Many of the other elements, such as the bone line and noller, made it to production. Suzuki only managed to move 6,138 Kizashis. Its lack of success wasn't on the quality of the car either. It was well received by automotive publications, with many of them praising the exterior styling, upscale interior, and solid driving dynamics. People that did end up buying them were pleased with the car, as it won various customer satisfaction awards. Many of the issues were with where it fit in the marketplace. At 181 inches, it was slotted between the midsize and compact segments. Cars in both categories had the Gazashi beat in crucial areas. It started at $19,794, which is considerably more expensive than cars in the compact segment. The Honda Civic and Toyota Corolla both started at around $15,000. Despite being at a size disadvantage compared to larger mid-size sedans, the Kizashi wasn't as down on the interior space as one might think. It even had more headroom than a few of them. It was still down in every other category in this regard though. Perhaps its biggest problem was that it didn't do much to draw new customers to the brand. It didn't excel at any one thing and instead tried to be an all-rounder. The competition did this much better than the Kizashi. Suzuki's sales as a whole tumbled down once again, this time to 23,994. The SX4 sold 11,606 units, and a new sportback model didn't help the car out either. Grand Vitara sales were down to about 4,478 units, bringing up the rear were the Equator and XL7, with figures of 14, 47, and 317 respectively. Sales ticked up in 2011 though they were still alarmingly low. A slightly more upscale sport trim helped the Gazashi move 6,942 units. Suzuki went all in this year and bought ad space during the Super Bowl. It was focused on the Gazashi's design and available all-wheel drive, but the spot had no effect in their actual numbers. The only car to see in the actual game was the SX4 with 12,861 sales. Overall, the figures were nearly identical to last year at 25,357. American Suzuki Motor Corporation filed for bankruptcy later this year. In addition to this, the company announced they'd stop selling cars in the United States entirely. This part of the company also oversees the sales of the brand's motorcycles, all-terrain vehicles, and marine outboard engines, but only the cars would be affected. Kizashi's sales wound down starting in 2013, and production stopped altogether in 2014. Suzuki has distanced themselves from the car in recent years, as their current offerings have ditched its design language and philosophy. Contrary to its name, it's pretty safe to say nothing great happened. <laughs>